Okay, here's our first real technical issue episode where when I recorded it, I double checked that, you know, I always double check to make sure everything has sound going and that uh, all the inputs are correct. And I checked and it said that it was pulling from the Yeti microphone. Turns out uh, it was not. So my own commentary is uh, sounds like it's underwater for most of the video uh, at about, well, the first 15 minutes or so of the video of the audio rather like my commentary, uh, sound like I'm possessed. But so what I've decided to do is because it's so bad, uh, I am probably just gonna talk over everything that I did while listening to the things I said. So this is really exciting. This is gonna be a good time for all of us, uh, guaranteed. So the video is gonna start with me being like, you know, hi everybody, how's it going? And I'm pointing out my shirt that I got. Um, it is a, but uh, this is a hilarious shirt that I decided to keep on brand with, essentially, by wearing Dragon Age slash Solacy stuff. <laughs> you can tell who I like a lot. Um, but this shirt is hilarious. It's like one of those like old vintage style shirts. And they actually have, it's like those old style like vintage like sports shirts where they'd have like five images of like a sports player on it. And like, I don't know, I remember them from like the 90s, you know? Oh, and then the, I'm pointing out that I changed my Valseline, my face paint. Uh, this is because I was tired, I think, and I was, run, I was like running late and I was like, I want to put something on, but I didn't want to put the whole thing on. Uh, this is the, this is still a Mythol Valiseline, like the one I've been wearing previously, but it is simply the, the simpler version from Inquisition. <clears throat> this game does not have this particular Valiseline anymore. They have one that goes all the way across the bridge of your nose, though, so it's somewhat similar. Um, but yeah, this is just, just this is just the cutesy, demure version of the big Valiseline, the Mythol Valiseline that I was wearing earlier. Oh yeah, so then I'm seeing the relationship tracker, and one of my younger sisters had mentioned this, that you can like level up your relationship with each person, which is interesting, advance your relationship by completing content with this companion. Every time you level up, you get more skill points for them, so that is nice. Oh yes, and I love Harding's outfit here. It looks very reminiscent of her Inquisition outfit. And I like that they've uh, kind of kept that kind of continuity going where it's like she, you know, she's, she found the outfit useful and not and good. Like she liked it, right? And she's just made a few modifications to it, but it's definitely got um, some like Ferelden Inquisition uh, aspects carrying over. Oh yeah, I did have a uh, a moment where I was like, oh, I shouldn't necessarily read all the codex entries. Like people, like like as soon as I get them, like people are gonna be, you know, like I don't know, not they're gonna be like bored or whatever. And then, I, but I'm but seriously, and this is this is the way I feel. It's like, but I've been waiting a long time for this game, and so like I'm darn well gonna read the lore as as soon as I get it. You know what I mean? And here's actually something important. I did start, I was reading the glossary at one point while I was just waiting for videos to like transfer over and stuff. And this did have a surprising new sort of like definition. And I'm not sure, I may have already mentioned all this before, but I wasn't sure, so I just wanted to be sure. And I still don't remember now at this point if I have mentioned it or not. I mean, we had decent names. We had good names. Like, Antom is specifically a branch, like a military branch of the Kuhn, of the Kunari. And like, we had a name for the ones that had left it called Tavashov. Like, why why change it, you know? All right, this actually works out because this is uh, this first bit, I think, is me just kind of reading some codex entries that I just got. So here we go. The Archive Spirit. There are Archive Spirits, or at least that's what we call them, but they're not spirits. Well, not really. Spirits can think. They can act on their own, but these ones don't do that. They have no free will, at least to start with. If you have a lot of magic, though, and I mean a lot of magic, you can kind of force them into get into shape. Give them a mind or something close. Do that, and they can remember pretty much anything you tell them for as long as you need. Only supposed to be seven, though, one for each elven god, and they're all destroyed. So where did this one come from, and who did it belong to? These also have to be, because one thing, I was like, well, Balar didn't say that, that there were, like, seven originally. And obviously, to me, I'm like, there were only, she's like, there were only supposed to be seven. Where did this one come from? I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Dreadwolves. It's the soul, it's solaces, you know? <laughs> of course it is. Uh, but, and it's been secreted away, and the others have been, uh, ruined. I also ask, good question me, where did we figure out there were seven? Like, where, where did that information come from? 
The Elven Armory. We found another one of those strange elven buildings, the ones with the rings spinning around them. This one was unique, though, because it wasn't half melted. Not sure what kind of magic you'd need to melt stone like that. Not sure that's a question I ever actually want to know the answer to. I don't know why this one survived mostly intact when the others suffered so much damage, but the alluvian inside was smashed. Maybe that was it. All that empty armor was pretty spooky, too. Kept expecting it to jump off the walls at me. Scouting report. Apparition. Expedition scouting report. Veil jumper Krita reporting. Kada reporting. I was in the northernmost stretch of Arlathan Forest, trying to find a way into the Ganalis ruin. We recently discovered an old journal that claimed a lost Halakeeper found a room full of relics inside Ganalis, down in the labyrinth. The entrance was blocked by rubble. As I was getting ready to wedge myself through a gap, an apparition appeared in front of it. It seemed to be blocking my way. Whatever it was, it wasn't solid, so I think it could have passed through, but it seemed to be waving its arms. It felt like a warning that I shouldn't enter the ruins. I didn't argue and turned and ran. And I did think, I was like, that seems a strangely um, self-aware for a Veljo. It seems like many of them just kind of throw themselves into danger, but, you know, it's like, oh, but I'll be fine, and then you go in and get mashed into a little pulp, so this was smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I go over to the World of Theta stuff, and it's um, stuff that I'm, like, it's just, like, general information that they just, like, gave all, you gave, like, obviously we have 28 out of 28, right? So it's just, like, the general information, a lot of it, I think, comes from Inquisition. Um, but yeah, I decided I'd probably read a couple here. I actually haven't read any in a while, so I should probably do that. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll get just a couple of them read here. It says, The Anderfells are a land of shocking extremes. It is the most desolate place in all the world, for two blights have left great expanses of the steppes so completely devoid of life that corpses cannot even decay there. No insect or grub will ever reach them. Well, and I was just like, you know, wait, that that's crazy. Like, that's a crazy thing. Like, they, they still have to decay because there's still, like, there's bacteria just everywhere. But then I was like, oh my gosh, is there no bacteria? Is it so devoid of life that there's not even any bacteria in the soil? You know? So, well, I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but... It is a land filled with wonders like the Meridian with the gigantic white statue of Our Lady carved into its face. We learned about that in Inquisition. Like, we remember, I remember reading about it. Uh, her hands outstretched and bearing an eternal flame, or wise topped fortress with its walls of living rock towering over the desolate plains below. The Anders too are people of extremes, the most devout priests and the most deadly soldiers, the poorest nation in the world, and the most feared. Most feared? I was like, what? I don't, I don't think that's... I have not really heard anything in particular about the Anders soldiers. And here I was, I'm pretty sad this was lost because I was like, I was looking down and it was like from a pursuit of knowledge in the tar travels of a chancery scholar by Brother Jenna TV. And I'm like, ah, because I'm a huge fan of Brother Jenna TV. I love reading his stuff. If I could just get like a book of all his things, I'd be so happy. But I'm a huge fan of Brother Jenna TV. It's like, I think I was saying, yeah, it's like he has self-awareness as his own, like, of his own biases, like, as a person and as a Chantry scholar. He's basically an anthropologist, you know, he, but he tries to write things as he is told. He's, he's basically like a Herodotus, like, for, like the Greek uh, historian Herodotus, who, like, did his darndest to write... You know, he's, he'd write out what people told him, even if it was, like, weirdly fantastical. and was like, I don't know if I believe that, but that's what I was told, so I'm writing it down. And it's like, so you can put your own, in, you know, your own perspective in, but it's like, here's what I was told, and here's what I think about it, but, like, you know, this is what they think, so, like, there you go, you know? Andraste, Bride of the Maker. There was once a tiny fishing village on the Waking Sea that was set upon by the Tevinter Imperium, which enslaved the villagers to be sold in the markets of Menrathis, leaving behind only the old and the infirm. One of the captives was a child, Andraste. She was raised in slavery in a foreign land. She escaped, then made the long and treacherous journey back to her homeland alone. She rose from nothing to be the wife of an Alamari warlord. Each day she sang to the gods, asking them to help her people who remained slaves in Tevinter. The fake gods of the mountains and the winds did not answer her, but the true god did. The maker spoke. He showed her all the works of his hands, the fade, the world, and all the creatures therein. He showed her how men had forgotten him, lavishing devotion upon mew idols and demons. And now he had left them to their fate, but her voice had reached him and so captivated him that he offered her a place at his side that she might rule all of creation. But Andraste would not forsake her people. She begged the Maker to return to save his children from the cruelty of the Imperium. Reluctantly, the Maker agreed to give man another chance. Oh yeah, I was like, oh, rule all of creation, like the end of the paragraph, and he's like, it's like, oh, rule all of creation by ignoring it? 
on Andraste's story, like I, I, I don't have an issue with Andraste herself, but I've always had, I've always been mad at the maker, right? Where it's a whole belief system based off of a God who ignores his people until some like hot booty walks by and he's like, oh, hey, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, and these and people who worship the maker, they're like, yeah, he ignores us, but we sing and hope that he will t- take care of us. But then he, they're always like, oh, but it's in the maker's hands. I'm like, the maker's hands are behind his back. He's sitting on his hands doing nothing according to your according to your own scripture you know what i mean like you don't he doesn't do anything anymore like and he only did briefly here for andraste you know and so i was always like mad but i'm always like looking between the lines right like i'm always trying to find like there's always a grain of truth in all these stories there's an origin point somewhere a kernel of 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 origin that that was where it all sprang from despite it being maybe you know mutated or mutilated along the way you know so like something somewhere here is 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 true to what actually happened but like maybe the events or the people like obviously we know that like well uh, i guess not maybe not obviously but like for many of us we know that solus has he made the veil right and that's one of my big examples is that Solo said, I, I made the veil, you know? And, but according to Charm Tree Belief, the maker made the veil. So it's like, okay, uh, either Solus is the maker and like is what people, like all, like a lot of his deeds that are attributed to the maker are actually what Solus did. And so he's technically the maker, you know? Or, which would be hilarious for a very staunchly human belief system. Um, at least, you know, one that has been, at least has been rewritten by humans to kind of edit out anybody else, including Shartan, who was a key figure in Andraste's battle. He was the elf that led the, uh, the elven contingent to help free the slaves from Tevinter. Um... Anyway, that's all a bit tangential, and I'm going, I'm kind of going off just while I'm record, like, editing, recording. Um, But then I do bring up the fact that, like, she's worshipping the Avar gods, right? Like, she's trying to sing to the Avar gods. Uh, And they do technically exist, and the the hack on the Jaws of a Con DLC for for Inquisition was so good. We went to visit the Avar, and I always wanted, I hoped in this game we get to go back to the Avar, because they're super, super cool. They have a fascinating belief system that, like, they essentially create their own gods. Like they are aware that for them, their gods are not immortal. They're not omniscient beings. They are entities that can live and die and but then be reborn again. And they have like this whole thing where like they essentially believe that that like in this it's true for them. Like their belief creates their gods like straight up. Like when a god dies, they spend like days with a ritual that like like essentially like their faith like their belief in the return of the god like after it's died brings it back yeah, it's a philosophical concept that humans like through through our own faith belief like wanting and like culture and everything they um that they're, that they're shaping the image essentially of a of a deity of a divinity um reflecting ourselves in that idea you know what i mean so it's just really interesting stuff so yeah if you want to look it up you can um i i remember reading about it briefly in college but it stuck with me for a long time so keep going yeah andraste went back to her husband mafrath and told him all that the maker had revealed to her together they rallied the alamari and marched to get forth against the mage lords of the imperium and the maker was with them the maker's sword was creation itself fire and f- flood famine and earthquake everywhere they went andraste sang to the people of the maker and they heard her i will say this this line always stuck with me too from varic where you know it's like varic is actually a devout andraste and despite you maybe not thinking that he's a religious dude um but he says at one point he's like i don't know he's like i think it's just the storyteller in me that likes the idea that you can save the world with a song and i'm like oh you know what I mean? Like, that's a really great way to look at it, you know? So I've always, I've always liked that aspect of the chant. Like, it's, it's in the word, right? The chantry, the chant, you know, the word is a song, you know? I think it's, I, I think that's a very interesting concept. Mm-hmm. The ranks of Andraste's followers grew until they were a vast tide marching over the Imperium. And when Mafrath saw that the people loved Andraste and not him, a worm grew within his heart, gnawing upon it. Here's my thing on that specifically. I don't... Mafarath is an interesting character because I think it would have been very weird to be the husband of a woman that you love, right? 
Um, and you think she probably loves you too, you think. Um, but then you're the god, this new god that you are going to worship, who is apparently like the all seeing one true divinity, also has a crush on your wife and wants her to be by his side for like by the maker's side forever after this, right? Like that had to be such a weird thing to love a woman who was loved by a god. At last the armies of Andraste and Mafra stood before the very gates of Minrathus, but Andraste was not with them, for Mafrath had schemed in secret to hand Andraste over to, to the Tevinter. <laughs> for this, the Archon would give Mafrath all the land to the south of the Waking Sea. And so, before all the armies of the Alamari and Tevinter, which is weird, because you'd think the Alamari armies would, like, disobey Mafrath and, like, go save their prophetess, you know what I mean? That doesn't make any sense. Um... Andraste was tied to a stake and burned while her earthly husband turned his armies aside and did nothing, for his heart had been devoured. But as he watched the pyre, the archon softened. He took pity on Andraste and drew his sword and granted her the mercy of a quick death. The maker wept for his beloved, cursed Mafrath, cursed mankind for their betrayal, and turned once again from creation, taking only Andraste with him. And Our Lady sits still at his side, where she still urges him to take pity on his children. Oh, and here, quick interjection, this is where it will actually start sounding just vaguely underwater and not like Satan himself. So, thank you guys for putting up with this bit, and uh, <laughs> I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Okay. Oh my gosh, this game is so pretty! I just can't, I just can't believe, I just can't believe that I'm playing Dragon Age. Four. It is funny though because I abbreviated to Dragon Age Veilguard and so DAV and so it's like DA5 and it's like you guys should have kept Dreadwolf. Seems Dad like was an excellent acronym. Here. You know what I mean? What hasn't happened? This area is where Tevinter Magisters destroyed Arlathan City centuries ago. A whole lot of blood magic during the war. What about now? Whatever Solus did stirred up everything again. The old blood magic from the war never went away. Ancient relics appear out of thin air, ruins float. It's like an old wound that never healed, and now it's bleeding again. This is incredible. And so we get to just get now get confirmation that this is actually the, the heart. So Arlathan City was not like the center of it was not a Minrathis. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, and uh, Minrathis was merely built upon other elven ruins, I suppose. And also, like, are we gonna, like, retcon- You know how we retcon Hawk in into hating blood magic? Where, like, you could be a blood mage in two, and then Inquisition rolls around, and Hawk's like, I hate blood magic, and you're like, what? You know what I mean? Um, and Solo's gonna do that, too, where he's like, I hate blood magic, because it did all this to, to my people, and I'm like, you literally said in Inquisition that like blood magic is merely another form of magic and as long as it is used responsibly with one's own blood or that of a willing participant, it is not a bad thing. You can even heal with it, but like it is, it does become bad because it like seems to like encourage people to like just like keep using more and more and more, you know, almost corrupts you it seems like, you know, but hello. If I remove the door, can I get in there? Let me, let me bumper this. Okay. Oh. I'm on it. I thought I was just trying to pick it up, but apparently I had to act. Okay. It was messed up. Oh, that scared me. Skin of a skin of yarn. Why is there a book in here? Look at the hollow statue from freaking when we were in Halamshara in the last game. This looks like maybe a little stash. I think this is the symbol of the Veil Jumpers. Nug! I wonder what good truffles will do me, you know? Nug, where's your hidden truffle? I'm trying to... How do you... Oh, there is no jumping? Okay. Wait. Oh! What is that? Like a a Jeru a Sylvan of some sort? Oh my gosh, are we bringing Sylvans back? 
What if Let you... me in. That was the capital city, Arlathan. This you is dare. what's left of it after the war. I might. I, don't... I know she said that. And, and like free and um i know she said that and i'm like annoyed i'm like yes uh, yes i heard you um but the, again this is arlathan city like mythological almost city at this point you know what i mean i'm taking some pictures if i can figure out how to do photo mode <laughs> i just realized there are hala but only because i was flicking the hide npcs tab and I, I, kept, I saw something flicker out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, MP, where are the NPCs? So I'm like flicking it, trying to figure out what's moving, what's appearing and disappearing, and there's hollow over there. Let's see if I can cheat and find the enemies. <laughs> nope, no enemies. Anyway, holy cow. Arlathan. floated back in the day. It, they did! He said, Asola said that they have had floating cities. Beautiful cities. That just were em embodied in magic, you know. We got it. Yes, show me this Sylvan situation going on here. Oh, well, I mean, we will potentially get this explained, but this could just be like elves who died um, when the veil went up and magic ceased to be in a place that you know, only functioned, like, functioned in tandem with magic. Um, or these were, like, spirit spirits that had, like, embodied, like, trees, spirits that had embodied various things, and then when the magic went away that was helping them exist, essentially, like, their forms, it looks like they're, they're sinking into the ground, like, this one that's closer is, like, you know, reaching out as it's going down, and that one looks like it's, like, looking down, like, no, you know what I mean? Um, interesting. This is very interesting. There's, my character is just so, she's so stunning. I did such a good job. <laughs> such a good job. Collect Imperial... Hmm? Fine, I'll open that. Imperial Weave. Okay. You're just gonna let me walk up on this and not give me any explanation, like any sort of spirit being here that like embodies their last memories or something? Can I swim in this game? Hold on. <sighs> nope! <laughs> it can't swim. <laughs> It's canon again. <laughs> the Inquisitor couldn't swim. She just disappeared. Uh, <laughs> drowns. Actually drowns. Oh no. These must be like Sylvan people. You know? Who like sort of took the form of elves. Oh my gosh. This is really sad. Or elves that were turned into Sylvans maybe? I don't know. This is tragic. Is that like a child, maybe? This is really, really, really sad. It's like, yeah, it's like an Inquisition when you were uh, going at the very beginning. Yeah, they're like sinking into the ground. Or is it just like the camp? Nug carving, valuable, very valuable, yes. A lament for fallen Elvenon. Is that, have I been messing up? Elvenon was the name of the empire and Arathan was the name of the city? <sighs> been too long. From a bell jumper's letter, I hear tall watchtowers once stood where these waters emptied into the sky, the torches lit to guide the weary traveler. Sometimes on still days when the mist hangs low on the river, I can imagine the lighted path after the golden spires of Arlathan and the voices of my people calling me home. I know Elvenon, our lost civilization. Mmm, it has been too long since I have read this material, apparently. Some of it's burning in my brain, and some of it is just kind of floats around in there, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know Elvenon, our lost civilization, is not how I imagine it. Arlathan was a place of wonder and magic and also of conflict and war ruled by tyrants. Yet still I mourn it and wish that I could have seen it just once and called it mine. And as below in different handwriting. These feelings are not yours alone. There is no sin in grieving what was lost and perfect though it was. I think that's a really important thing to say, honestly, from Strive. Um... Like, it's gotta be complicated, right? Be Like, having had an empire and, like, knowing that your people were once, like so different culturally from what they are now and it's like but you're like also there were terrible things happening 
but like we did so many wonderful things, you know, and so it's just a complicated thing and I like that that is expressed in that little letter. These are such beautiful designs for things. It looks like this wants me to... Oh! Cool, okay. I was like, I was like, I was like the ladder looks broken, but... Alright. Why was it, like, Sylvan this way? You know what I mean? Unless you guys are fighting Sylvans for this. The Aravels are so beautiful. It's so cool to see them. I mean, we see them in Inquisition, in the Dales, right? Uh, in the Exalted Plains. But, like, it's so cool to see them. They're just so beautiful. I look, they look like airships, you know? This also reminds me of when you get to the Hinterlands for the first time and you're going down into the Crossroads Town, right? And you're finding the evidence of the struggle, right? You're seeing Templars frozen in ice. You're seeing mages that are, like, blast, like, you know, stabbed into, like, a wall. You know what I mean? Like, the, the environmental storytelling is just really, really good. It's really good. It's tragic. It was really sad because it, it goes away after you leave the Crossroads. Oh, you're getting- this one's getting sucked back into the tree! These two are getting sucked back into the tree! Fascinating! So sucked into the ground, sucked into the trees... Also, I have always thought that Aspen, like, Druid types, or Aspen- Aspen Dryad types would be really beautiful. Also, Juniper? Oh, wow! Woo! <laughs> This reminds me of, I'm gonna be so many <laughs> things, but like this reminds me of the big hand that you find in the Exalted Plains when you unlock the area behind the big dread wolf statue, Gillanon's Grove. When you go into Gillanon's Grove, there's a giant hand. Um, that there are people are like we have. There's no other. There's no other remnants of any statue, and they're like. There's even some in the let in like the notes that write that are like you know we like there are some who say that this you know was potentially just made as a hand scat like sculpture because there's no way that the ancient people could have you know ancient elves could have made something so colossally big without it you know collapsing under its own weight or that anybody could make it make something so wonderful or so large without it being you know collapsing under its own weight or like just a, you don't have the skill for it right and it's always like hey, 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 because like people are amazing and that sort of thing happens in real life too right where it's like no there's no way people could have made the pyramids and yeah, to be aliens i'm like you will underestimate humanity a an astronomical amount like we are capable of so many things so many wonderful things even a thousand years ago two thousand five thousand ten thousand years ago we were in we were capable of incredible things Humans are intuitive and adaptable and artistic and creative. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't tell me these are old boats. Oh, maybe they were... I mean, I could see them trying to, like, maybe, like, use a boat to escape. But, like, there's no way that wood... I mean, I say that wood wouldn't have lasted, but, like, we have that giant hollow statue over there. So maybe everything got super well preserved here. Anyway, I saw this statue over here. This would be a Durthamin one, right? With the owl? Yeah. Durthamin symbol is the owl. I believe. The secrets of the past now hidden to each and every man forbidden. But seek ye with the watchful eye. Find a key in the owl's cry. I told you, huh. Durthamin, a giant owl. god of secrets. Must be something to this. If you, if this was proper, if, if uh, you would think you would know, you know what I mean? In the cry of the owl. What the heck? Whole forest is weird. Here goes nothing. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I was thinking. I was. I was just trying to read it again so that I could. <laughs> Like, see if I could go somewhere and find something that was like some sort of owl's cry or hear something. Apparently, <laughs> I just had to click it again and do it. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Explorer's Journal Discovery. I'm convinced these owls. Is it, have I like totally smeared my. Okay. I haven't totally smeared my face paint yet. Anyway, the left side, you probably can't see it too well, but the left side is so much harder to do than the right side because I'm right handed. So that's why the, the camera's on. One of the reasons the camera's on this side. So you guys only see my good one. <laughs> 
I'm convinced these elves are more than statues. There's a power behind these silent guardians. I'm hesitant to tamper with them, but on the other hand, owls represent wisdom and transformation. I can't imagine a monument to such noble creatures would be harmful. Yeah, well, you never meant the ancient elven gods, and Durthamon was probably not very nice. The ritual in Durthamon's temple to get the shield that you can get from him, um, it's like an extra area in Inquisition, like, that was brutal what those people did, but that was after Durthamon, like, died, like, or, like, when, you know, seemed to sort of cease. Nope. Okay. Is this a water Aravel? Holy moly, they look so nice! So nice. Let me out. That's locked. Currently inaccessible. Alright, I'll be back. I'll be back for your secrets. Keep your secrets. <laughs> I just... This is so beautiful. This is so cool. This is so cool. I haven't photo moded this much ever in any game. But, and like, you know, Legendary, Ma the Mass Effect Legendary Edition has photo mode, which is nice. I took some photos, but like, not a ton, you know? So, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. You know? But, um... I'm gonna take so many pictures of this game! <laughs> I'm so excited! Oh, this is just so cool! Yee! <gasps> Wah! Hoo There's Hall right here! Are you guys dying? This one's dead. Are you dying? They look emaciated! No! Why aren't we helping the Hala? Let me help the Hala! I'm gonna cry! This one's like... Next to its dead partner! Oh my god! Oh, you can see its spine! Why aren't we helping them? Oh my gosh. I'm very upset. Ooh, one day, one day maybe we'll get to swim in the Dragon Age game. Maybe that's what we can hold him to for the next one. In the next, you know, ten years. Nev, you sure you're up for this? I'm so short! I'm fine. Couldn't sit still much longer. Then let's go. Oh, we're not gonna take the <laughs> fancy Aravel barge. We're taking an actual rowboat. Anyway, girl squad. <laughs> I've never seen fog this thick in Demeta's Crossing. Yeah, well, it's not looking good, you know. And the the ambient music also not good. You hear that violin go? Bad sign. Girls this isn't well. right. The dock usually has people bringing goods to market, bartering and shouting. It's always busy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we get Something it. Something happened here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like that. <laughs> Your environmental Switch. storytelling is enough. I can see from the gray fog you've put on the area and the violins you've got going that things are uh, not good. What am I yawning? I didn't get to start playing until, so like, quiet. 3 o'clock today. Quiet. Yeah, uh-huh. Where is everybody? Thank you, detective. Yeah, I didn't start playing until, like, 3. I just keep having things to do. Or, like, I don't know. I'm trying to, like, do, like, walk, like, 2 to 4 miles every morning before I play. For, like, at least an hour. Um. And then, <laughs> I don't know where the day goes. And I, I, like, I eat breakfast. I go do my thing. I shaved. I, like, touched up the shave Look, this morning. Where are you going? The town square is this way. Oh, don't you, you like dare that. make an issue of me wandering around looking at things. This is not Call of Duty. You don't have to hold my hand. This game is as linear as it can get without being Call of Duty, you know? It's market day. People should be out selling eggs and buying bread. But everything's just abandoned. They're all dead. They barricaded the main entrance into town. Oh, this is like, to um... something out? No. To keep something in. Yeah, well, you can't really tell that. 
I mean, you kind of, well, okay, you kind of can. I was like, I was like, depending on the slope sometimes, but like things will kind of create their own slope on either side, right? Like, like a natural slope on two sides. Uh, but no, this definitely looks like. I think we can get in over here. Yeah, that's nice. Let me look around. Calm down. You need to find quiet companions. Um, this reminds me again <laughs> of my, well, my boomer. Freaking, this reminds me back in the day of, um, what is this? What was that towel? Oh, good. See, it's a good thing. Is I usually do this a lot, so it's been hard to have the face paint on. Um, but hopefully I don't, like, totally ruin it. Who, what town is it? Crestwood. In Crestwood. When you get to Crestwood for the first time. Oh, blight. Oh. Oh, that looks really bad. Ooh. At least some people got out, I guess, to barricade them. Barricade the blobs in. Oh, this is nasty. This is, uh, well a... Uh, it's blight. Even worse than in the forest. Woo! Oh. No one gets out. No exceptions. <gasps> oh my gosh. You okay? What happened to you? Keep them inside. Listen to the mayor. Oh, there's a person over there. Hello? At least I two. I think he can hear us. I mean, they're dead. But like, oh my gosh. We'll be rewarded. All of us. Uh, uh, Everyone has to stay. Uh. No. You can't leave. Hey, can you hear me? It's a human. Just stay here, and everything will be fine. They're basically ghouls. They're they're on their way to becoming ghouls. But some of these people have been in here for a while. Oh, this is really gross and horrifying. Oh. oh. Someone used powerful magic to dominate the minds of these villagers. I thought it was just blight. Oh god, that looks really, really bad in there. It's wiggling more too, I don't like that. Oh, get out, 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 out. I think that's probably a veil jumper. Why aren't you guys having an issue with it? And you're like, oh. Oh, those noises. There is something under the floor of the Kuguna. <laughs> Why is nobody pointing that out? The town square. We need I mean, to search for survivors. Let's see what we can find. Search for Find-out. survivors? I think we should light this house on fire. This one has an entity. In the in the floor, you know. Ah, uh, uh, I was hoping we'd find, you know, something. Wow, how we would be so infected with light right now? It's unreal. This is Adeline. I knew her. She was a farmer. Sold spices to us. The best in Arlathan. I can't believe this happened. I have a hard time believing that Arlathan had like, just like regular farmers and whatever. You know what I mean? Like... Oh, somebody was getting shoved out. Are trying to get out and died. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. This is disgusting. Arlathan was supposed to be like a wild place, but they're like, yeah, they were farmers and inside spice sellers. Like it was supposed to be very. um... Oh my gosh. What? 
Did it just get like launched in? Like I saw this Aravel, but this one's like, were they trying to get out and then? Where, how did that one get launched Look, in? Is that an Aravel on the roof? Yeah. The light must have lifted it up there. The blight. The blight. Like it's a lie. No, something launched that Aravel. I'm, I'm a ghoul right now. Like, there's like. Oh! Uh, oh, they were trying to get out! We we're trying to get in, and then there was something in there, and they were trying to get out! Oh my gosh. Also, don't give me like a weird glowing effect if you're not actually gonna give me damage. You're teaching me the wrong thing. This blight is. Weird. Yeah, I know. Never seen anything like it. Never. Blight's usually dead, static, but this is alive. Yeah. No. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, that's Fighting a good point. More survivors. more survivors. We haven't found any. Oh, uh, somebody hung themselves, and and some people are just like impaled, like they're husks. If I see it like an animal, I'm gonna cry. What was that? Something big. Dragon! Stay sharp. A blighted dragon, it's a blighted dragon, it's a blighted dragon. This is disgusting. What is that? Over there. Two more survivors. The, uh, the survivors is a strong term. Hey, what's going on here? Find the Veiled Jumpers. Bring them to the mayor. They're talking about Jahel and Milva. They said bring them to the mayor. If we find the mayor, then maybe we'll find your friends. And, you know, a, a horrifying... Hell Pit. There's a Hell Pit over there. There's Must a Hell Pit. Looking. Must find the Veiled Jumpers. Oh, okay, so maybe you the haven't found... To find them. You, so you haven't found them. Only a matter of time. Or at least these ones have it. But I assume if they are being mind controlled by something, that um, oh jeez, um, that that something would have them stop looking if it had what it wanted. You know. This is horrifying. What do the mayor want with Why are you asking me that? A sinkhole. But how? The literal depths of hell, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Did I just slip? That's the deep roads down there. I was gonna say it! I was trying to say it. That's what I was trying to say. I was trying to say this looks like when you've got like a blight or something and like the the dark spawn just like boil up out of the ground, you know? Um That's what it reminded me of. And, and uh, oh my gosh, yeah, no, the dark spawn, uh, blah, blah. ooh, there's a bunch of people, well, you know, ghouls, there's a bunch of ghouls Look, over here. More people. Hmm. Must round up everyone. Must get them inside. We will be rewarded. Trying to shove those people in there so that they can get eaten. Could you imagine, too, if, like, some of your villagers, like, your, like, your friends and family were, like, mind controlled and then like we're shoving you into like a really obvious like horrifying death pit you know or like a death ball you know like oh that would be so horrible i would be so infected with blight right now my warden is screaming i always think it's funny when blight gets involved in any of the games like past origins and it's like treated really oddly Oh, you're a veil jumper. You're, you're the veil jumpers? Melva! That's one of your fellow veil jumpers. Oh. Oh, that was like a terrible death. Jahel, he's alive. 
<laughs> Belara. We're, we're going to help you. We'll get you down, Jahel. No. Let, <laughs> the gods. The gods have returned. Not the whatever maggot thing I that is. I saw them. I heard their voices. <laughs> the gods did this? A blood ritual to release the blight. <laughs> In the villagers, they said they needed power. Valara, be careful. A blood ritual? Sacrificing their own people. Again. I mean, they wouldn't care, right? Like, oh. But obviously, like, they had to have, like, taken the memories of something? Of, of somebody? That's why they wanted the veil jumpers specifically? Come on. I don't. That sounds close. I don't think you're a real person. I don't think you're a real person. You're a trap. You're a trap. Oh, well, humans and elves, I guess. Is he gonna get eaten? Tell me I'm gonna fight a dragon right now. Fresh blood. A hungry heart. <sighs> Come to me. Okay, okay, it's Gilanon speak. I'm like, is that Gilanon? Gilanon wants the dragon. I think, yeah. What's a dragon doing here in the first place? What is that? Oh, it's so disgusting. You. You're the mayor of this town. The village. The people. Are they, uh... Blighted. Dead. All of them. You gave them to the gods. I was gonna say, he... Didn't you? There's only one way. They were in my head. Infecting my thoughts. They made me do it. Please, help me. You're not going anywhere until I get the full story. I tried to protect people. You have to believe me. The gods told me to lure the Veil Jumpers to the center of town. The others were to be rounded up and kept safe. They would be the first to witness the glory of Gilanane's new creation. She showed me gold. So much gold. We saw the gold in the center there, right? So that indicates maybe that there was a sellout of some sort. All this for gold. The villagers, the veil jumpers. The blight's everywhere. Demeter's crossing is dead because of your greed. Uh, I, I didn't know. You don't understand what it was like to hear those voices. I mean, I'm sure you the could be been... exploited. Yeah. Greed and fear. They, they got a foothold I'm in. supposed to feel sorry for him? I say we leave him right here. I think he should. He'll die. Should. The blight. Everywhere, what if the dragon comes back? If we let you go, you'll run straight back to the gods. They were in his head. Their influence might linger. I understand what they do now. I won't be tempted again, I swear. So he did get tempted. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Usually it's better to be like really nice, you know, about things and be like, oh, you get second chances. And I'm, I'm a fan of second chances, but this man kind of doomed his entire village. It's not like, not complicated like the mayor was in Crestwood, right, where the mayor killed a bunch of people, a blighted village essentially full of people, in order to save the ones who weren't blighted, right? Like, that was a complicated, like, hearing, like, a judgment that I had to give, right? Where it's like, ooh, like, 
what would you do in order to save the people that you could save? You know what I mean? This guy just got greedy. Like they had a to like the gods found a toehold in his mind by offering him gold. Like it wasn't even like, oh, we'll keep you alive. They're like, we'll give you gold if you'll do this, and he did it. And he shouldn't be able to survive in my mind with everybody else who's like dead. You know what I mean? Like he should die here with the rest of them because that's um that's what he did to them. So I'm gonna leave him here. Leave him here. He can fend for himself. No! Wolves will get him in the night. Or, given the state of this place, something worse. Uh, I don't think... Neve is a detective, though, so she's all about, like, you know, following laws and rules, probably. Like, to a degree, right? Like, she seems, like, a little bit, like, on the edge of the law, but... Hmm... The people of Demeter's Crossing were depending on him. The least he can do is stay with them now. A steep price to pay. And we're the ones to choose it? That is fair. Somebody has to. You don't understand the power they have. They show you what you crave. They speak to the darkness in your heart. No one can stand against that. Watch me. I won't be the last to surrender. I felt the evil. Let's go. Mm -hmm. No point arguing with a dead man. No. That is pretty brutal. That is pretty brutal. The fate but... had opened, and the gods were free. Oh, he's still narrating. The Solus. They'd woken up to find their empire, their subjects, even their fellow gods, all gone. Orb. But they still had the power of the blight, and corrupting a village was just the start. Where are they, they going? They plans to tap more of the blight, all of it, to rebuild their empire. Blight doesn't build things. As a path to power, it had its costs. Yeah. And everyone would pay for it. I just. Our plan to stop Solus really was not good. You know what I mean? It's like now we have two angry gods who you can't talk to. Solus you could at least try to talk to, who had a soul. Like he had, you know, like he felt regret and grief and feelings. He had feelings and he cared. He cared deeply about people. That's why anytime you helped anybody, he approved. Like if you took him to the hinterlands and were like helping the villagers and like helping the people in the area, like Solus would approve. Like a slight approval every time. For like not every time, but for a lot of the times, right? Kinda like Bull and Sarah. Um and so yeah, he like he has kindness. He has the capacity for kindness and like, you know, these, these gods don't. We definitely traded for worse. You know what I mean? Like, it was a bad trade. <laughs> so, and so is it stuck. So, now it's just a bunch of little guys trying to do their best. But, anyway, sorry, I was fixing. I was actually fixing Solus. He's over here. I have him in, uh, on my PlayStation 4 that I almost never use anymore. But, yeah, okay, during the game, sick. So, we got uh, the fast travel beacon... Up in there? Or no, oh! That's an undiscovered one. Did I did discover one here? Why did- it looks like a little Normandy. Listen, I'm not sure I'm a fan- I'm not a fan of starting to like merge Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Let the two be distinct. I love them for their separate things. Like I had this fast travel beacon already. Hmm. Yeah, and I guess we do need to get back and let them know that the gods are on a rampage. And we have yet to realize, and even the spoiler that I heard that the Bioware devs said in one of the promotional materials didn't tell me whether or not the gods made the blight, or if they are just utilizing it and it comes from something else, you know? And I did, when I, when I did hear that, though, I was just like, that definitely, no, like, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. I'll wait on that one. Um... But yeah, uh, cause my, cause, cause, cause they keep being, I, I was thinking even independently, I was like, did they make it or are they just using it? Um, this is, that's a big leap too. It's not just that the gods had their own, like the Avenirus had their own power and like, were like doing terrible things. Like they are 
blighted, which is like something else entirely, which has its own malevolence, right? It must be something else entirely that has come from some other place or thing or entity, and it has like, and it like corrupted the gods, who are probably already, you know, corrupting themselves, but again, it got a toehold, maybe it got a, got a foothold in the mind or in the weakness or in the greed or whatever, the avarice, you know? Anyway, this is fascinating. This is really, really cool. This is cool stuff. All right. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to cut over now to my Patreon. Thank yous. So if you made it this far, thank you all so much for putting up with that. It is not an issue going forward as far as I know. As I've been checking pretty rigorously ever since this one happened. As I noticed when it happened almost right after it happened. So, you know, should be good now. But thank you all again for watching. And really quick, I want to give a, a shout out. And shout out to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my acorn chair patrons. Thank you so much, Fan, for your support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my sapling tier patrons, Reese Galito and Sebastian James. Thank you guys so much for your support. I very much appreciate it as well. And I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to my forest tier patrons who have gone above and beyond in their support of me and the channel and who I truly, honestly cannot thank enough. So thank you so much, Christopher. And thank you so much, Nightshade. Again, thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one.